Wow. Um, where do I begin? I just want to say welcome to church. It is awesome to be at the awesome house of the Lord every weekend. Every Sunday we get to come and just hear from God. You know, sometimes we don't hear from God during the week because we're just caught up with, you know, whatever, anything, just work or things of the, you know, the world, thing, our life. Yeah, so we don't always clearly hear God. So this is the place that we can hear God, all right? So welcome. And if you're here for the first time, I do want to extend an extra warm welcome to you. This house is for you as well. If you want to call it your home, please call it your home because we would love to have you here. So, um, wow, I'm finally here. I'm finally here. Like, I didn't know if I would make it here, to be honest. In year one, I would start off speaking and then finish off my sentence like, it, was, it wouldn't make sense, basically. I would just not know what I'm saying. I would freak out. And I just want to give God glory because he's so good. And I'm finally here. And it's awesome. And the Lord's really been speaking to me about um, what I'm going to talk about. Um, it is going with the theme. We are, um, I am going to be sharing about um, praying. The Lord has um, obviously been um, really speaking to Pastor Peter and the leaders about praying, giving, and fasting. That's, that's his heart, really. Yes. So he's put it in my heart ever since I came to him, really, to get with him in this place that I'm going to share about. It's called The Secret Place, and I've titled this message, The Power of The Secret Place. I don't know if it's up there. No? Yes, it's The Power of The Secret Place, and it's really, really awesome. It's it's something that the Lord has really been putting into my heart for so long, but really, really strongly in the last two years, I think, just really, really calling me into this place because it's so powerful. There is power in The Secret Place. It's our hiding place. It's the place where we can come and just be away with the Lord, just personal interaction with Jesus. It's very important. And this message is for all of us. It's for me. It's for Pastor Sonia. It's for Mrs. Thomas. It's for every single believer. Every single believer, this message is for us, but for every single day, not just for today and this message that I'm giving. It's what the Lord is calling us to daily. It's very, it's just so important. And um, before I get into it, I obviously want to open up in a word of prayer because, you know what, I know we can see me and nerves can kick in here and there, but you know what, I really want the Lord to speak because he's so good and he really has a word for every one of us today. It's very, it's just crucial that we, um, we're open and that we can hear from the Lord and not me because if it's from me, then I don't know what's gonna, how it's going to go down, but if it's from the Lord, I know it's going to really sink into your hearts, yes? So if I can ask everyone to just bow their heads as um, I pray. Father God, I just really want to thank you for this time, Lord. You're so good. You're so good to us. You're such a good Father, Lord. And I just really want to commit this time to you, God. I just want to give you my mouth, Lord. I want to give you my heart, Lord. And you're just, you're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy for me to be up here and just share what you've given to me in the quiet, Lord. In the quiet times, Lord, you said to share out on the rooftops, Lord, what you share in our secret place. And this is what I want to share today, what you've shared with me, Lord. And I pray that you would just really move Move in the hearts of every single person, God, not one person, Lord. May they not see me, Jesus, but may they really, 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 Lord, hear you, your voice, because this is what you have to say, not what I have to say, Lord. So I just give you glory for this time, and I just pray, Lord, that you would really just tug on the hearts of everyone here, Lord, that we would come away with you, because that's what you want. So I just bless you, Lord, and I just give you this time, and I thank you, Lord, for everything, everything that you've done in my life and the lives of everyone in this place, Lord. I just give you glory and honor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, oh, okay. So um, I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 6. And please turn with me there. I know it might be up on the wall, but um, just turn with me because when you, if you do have your Bibles, that is, if you have your Bible, if you don't, bring it next week because it's really powerful, the words. The book is actually powerful. It speaks. It speaks more than the screen, I believe. It's just when you have it in your hands, it does something to you. So please, Matthew 6. And I'll just read from 5 to verse 7. Say amen when you're there, please. Ready? All right. Well, Jesus says this. He says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen or who is in the secret place. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Amen? 
It's good. It's very good. So I'm not going to like go into uh, verses 5 or really 7. Um, I really wanted to look into verse 6, and it says, but when you pray, go into your room. And other versions say, when you have closed the door, when you have closed the door, then you pray to your father who's in the secret place. Yes? And I just, I really did want to look into the first part of, uh, I guess, that verse where it says, when you pray and when you have closed the door. Because there is power in closing the door. I have to say that, and I want you, like, I'm probably going to say it a lot today, and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Because I want you, God has actually put it in my heart that we need to close the door. Because you can't go into the secret place, and you can't experience the secret place, that special, special place, until you've closed the door. Yes? It's just the truth. You can't, because that means that there's an open door and there's um, distractions. Yes? Um, I, I, I was talking to the Lord, and, you know, Jesus... We read all over the scripture that Jesus went off into the wilderness. He prayed a lot. He prayed three quarters of his life was in prayer, was in secret with the Father. Really, that's what led him to the cross. Really, that's what gave him the strength to even hear from him like directly and to do what he did, yes? And so, and, he, and we read that he was, you know, went up to mountains or he went to the wilderness or to some secluded place, yeah? But he still, in this verse, tells his disciples that they need to close the door. And I believe that it's not just the door. But really, before I get into what I think, what the Lord has put on my heart, doors, what do they signify? They signify, I guess, what are they used for? They're used for, I've written here that they're used for keeping things in and out. So they're used for keeping things in and they're used for keeping things out. They're used for privacy. You know, when you go to the toilet, you know, or the shower, you know, with just your room, you want to be in private, you close the door, right? So the privacy. Security, our homes, we close the door because we don't want some random person just coming in and, like, coming and dining with us, like, who are you, Joe? You know, we don't know who you are, you know? Or maybe we're sleeping and, you know, we want security. We don't want someone to come while we're asleep. It's, it's for security. And I just wanted to um, point out real quick, actually, because, look, Jesus says that to close the door and go into the secret place, so like I said, the doors are for privacy, right? So privacy, I, I really, this is my little revelation and I hope it can make sense, but privacy, it's for keeping things in and out, yes? And it's for security. And I'm telling you, in the secret place, you have security. You have, you're actually protected. You're in the holy of holies. You've passed through the gate. You've passed through the, the, the lampstand. You've passed through the You're in the holy of holies and nothing can come. Nothing can actually, when you're with the father in his arms wrapped around him, the devil can't come. He can't come and steal anything from you. He can't come and tell you lies that aren't true because you're, you're with your father. And he's telling you what's the truth about you and about him and about reality, about, about his truth. And the devil can't come. So we need to close that door because there's security in that. Yeah? Um, also, doors, like, when you, generally when you go through a door, it's because you're leaving one place and you're entering into the next place. So that's why Jesus says to close the door. And I think that's so important because we need to leave from this place that I'm in, let's just say I'm in my room. I'm, I'm, I need to close the door. I need to actually close the door because I need to get out from this place that I was in, in my mind, in my thoughts, and the things I need to do, and I need to get into his place, the spirit realm, yeah? So, yeah, I think it's very important that we close the door. Jesus thinks it's important because otherwise he wouldn't have put it here and he wouldn't, and the Holy Spirit has been really, really speaking to me about it. You need to close the door. Anyways, some of our doors, I've brought some things that, um, you know, I just wanted to be a little bit practical, I guess. That some of our doors look like this. It's a sponge. <laughs> Mothers or, or fathers or anyone that likes, you know, kind of likes to clean, this is a door. This is a door that you need to close because there's times for me, especially now that I'm a wife, that I've been like, oh, I just love cleaning. Like, it's just, I like cleaning, you know? Like, I just like cleaning. Like, I kind of want to clean this now, <laughs> but I won't. No, like, cleaning, it's like we just, sometimes I've had times like when I'm just cleaning the table, I'm cleaning, you know, the bench, and, and the Lord's calling me. He's actually calling me, and I'm like, oh, oh, I just have this last part to do, you know, Lord. <laughs> but first, let me just quickly, like, just finish off cleaning, you know, whatever it is. But this is a door that we need to close, and this is what the Lord is saying, and I'm just going to leave it there. 
He's saying to close the door. And I'm not trying to, please, I'm really not trying to say, because I know that we are a church that we do get in this place. So forgive me if I'm coming across like you're not in there, because I know that we are. I know that we are. But God's calling us for a deeper, deeper uh, relationship with him. He wants more. Trust me that the Lord wants more. Even if you're on your knees, it's so good. It's so good that you live your life on the knees, on your knees, really. But um, he wants more. He's got more. <laughs> this is a really big door for me anyways. And it's got a lot of little doors in there, all these channels. And it's really bad. It's really dangerous. <laughs> so we need to close this door. This is a door. This is a door. And it's true. Because you can't, it's, you can't get in your secret place if your TV's on and you're kind of half... You're listening, you got that. It's, it's speaking to you as well. It's, it really is. It's just a fact. That's what the Lord's told me to do today. So I really pray that, you know, um, you receive. Um, this is probably for youth or um, the boys, some girls like me. But this is a door. And the Lord, <laughs> the Lord is calling you to close this door more than once a fortnight. I don't know if you got that. Hey! <laughs> no, I had to. I'm sorry. I really had to. And this guy over here, this is a really big door. This is such a bad door, like that needs to be just shut. It needs to be shut because this thing, like I, I've, I've like lifted in the, on the table and to go to the toilet. And I was like, oh, I need my phone. This is such a dangerous door that needs to be just shut. And I mean not turned like on silent. I mean it needs to be turned off because then your door is slightly open. Because when you do hear that vibration, you're already, oh, what if it's an important thing? Now, I've done that, and it was Optus. <laughs> <laughs> and it was bad. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Lord. I didn't mean it. I thought it was, you know. Oh, it's good, but it's true. And um, maybe, you know, dads or just men, this might not be what you do. You know, you probably don't use this, but work. You know, leave your work at work. You know what I'm saying? Because God will be calling you, and even during work, really. Um, sometimes you need to just put it down and be like, ugh, God's calling me, I need to go, I don't care. Uh, it's the truth. It's actually so true. I'm, I can't help it. This is what the Lord has um, he's put on my heart. That You know, um, Benny Hinn, I don't know if you know about him, but he's an awesome preacher, evangelist. He, like, he does, God has used him in such awesome ways. And um, he was sharing this story about, um, I guess, his sister. He hadn't seen her in a long time. And he, everything was prepared, the meal. And I hope I said this story right because it's been a while since I, but I, I, this, I think this is what it is, yeah? It's pretty much this. But he had, the meal was prepared, everything looked beautiful. He's from, he's an, um, he's from Israel, so like, I'm sure there was like awesome food, big feast set up, and he hadn't seen his sister for years and years and years, and he really wanted to just see his sister. They've made a plan, and the family's there, everything's you know, together. And the Lord was calling him, and the Lord was calling him, like calling him, and he was like, Lord, I haven't seen my sister, like we, I'm about to eat. But the Lord was calling him, you know what I'm saying? So, look, I'm going to be honest, I can't remember if he actually left or not. I can't remember, but that's not the point. The point is that the Lord was calling him, and the Lord wanted to use him. The Lord wanted to use him the next day. The Lord wanted to speak to him because he was preaching the next day. And many things were going to come, or came, from that service because he went away with the Lord. And even though his sister was there and he hasn't seen his long, like, you know, lost sister in years. He hasn't seen her. He just wants the fellowship a little bit. The Lord was calling him. And the Lord was calling him. And he's like, oh, I've got to get out of here. I don't feel good. Like, I need to go. My dad's call. Like, I have to go. You know what I mean? It's very, very important that when we hear this call, that we just close the doors. Just close the doors. It's not worth it, you know? These doors, they're, they're not even close to what you can get out of being in the place, this awesome, beautiful, secret hiding place with Jesus. It's just the truth. And if you haven't been in there, I just want to challenge you. Just close the doors. You might think, oh, it's going to maybe be boring. Believe me, it's not. It's like the most entertaining place, really. It's where you're with the Father and you can see his face. And the Bible says in Sol Songs of Solomon that he wants to kiss you with his kisses. This is where he kisses you with his kisses. It's in this place. It's in this place where you will, honestly, you'll see Jesus. You'll see him. You'll see him for who he is. Things come to life in the secret place. Like, if you don't understand the blood of Jesus, like, get in the secret place because that thing, that blood, that living blood will actually become real to your life. You'll be like, whoa, I thought it was just blood. 
but it's more. It's actually more, and it will become real to you in this place because the Bible says that, um, I just want to get the right verse, but I'm not going to turn to it or anything, but it's in Jeremiah. I think it's 33, 30. I can't really see my notes. I just need to preach here. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 33, 3, I think it is. It says that, call unto me, and I will show you great and unsearchable things. That means that when you call unto him and you, you just sit there in his presence, he's going to show you things that you can't actually find for yourself. Like you, you can go and look and look and look, but you're not going to find it because it's unsearchable. That's him and his revelation, what he pours, his mysteries. His, well, the mystery has been revealed. It's Jesus Christ. But there's so much more to God, and you will only find it when you're with him. Like you can find it in the word. And you'll know it in the Word. And you know what? Really, you can read this Word in um, the flesh, and you probably won't receive much from it. But read it in the Spirit. Get with, get with Jesus. Open this up, and it will come to life. The things of God will, will, will smack you. You'll be like, oh. oh uh, that's where it says, be still and know that I'm God. Because you, how can you speak when you know who you were in before? You're before holy God. And that's what I wanted to talk about as well. Um, is that closing the door is the beginning to entering into the, the spirit, God's realm. He's, God is a spirit. He's a spirit and he's looking for those. He's looking. He's searching. He's actually looking. God is looking for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship him if you're worshiping in flesh and like, yeah. It needs to be in spirit and truth. So you need to enter into the spirit. All right, and there's a way that I want to show you. There's a few ways that people do it. Um, I just mentioned it before. Get into the Word. What other way? What, what other way of getting into the Spirit other than speaking the truth? Opening up the Bible and just speaking truth. I like to just um, listen to music. But Benny Hinn, he was saying that he actually likes to just listen to soft music about Jesus, just lifting him up and just sit there and wait. Like Pastor Peter was sharing that um, the Father, you know, he's sitting there and he's, he's waiting. And it says as well in that scripture that the Father, who's already, he's already there in the secret place. He's waiting for us, really. But we need to wait for this thing called the flesh to just die, for this thing to stop speaking because it speaks so much. It actually just doesn't stop talking. So we just wait. Or maybe sing. Maybe just, you know what, use our imagination because God gave us our imagination. You know, use it. See, see the angels, man. Thousands of angels like just sitting there worshiping Jesus. And get into that place that already exists. It's already happening. Just get in there. Yes, Lord, holy. And just, just worship him. Tell him who he is. Tell him what he's done for your life. Speak truth. Yes, Lord, your blood is so good. It cleans me. Thank you. Pour me, Lord, with your holy blood. And just, just say whatever comes to your heart. But it obviously needs to be truth. Speak truth. And I'm telling you, you'll, get, you'll slowly find yourself now you're in the spirit realm with God. You're really just just there like your flesh isn't even speaking that it's really not speaking much anymore because you're before you're really you're in there now and all the doors are shut and now is a place where god you know we don't go pastor sonia i really thank you for that class um in your three worship it really changed my life it really changed the way that i look at worshiping the lord um you said something like we don't go in there to have a funny feeling you know we don't go in there to you know, feel tingly or like to kind of like experience a move of God. We go in there because he's worthy of it. We go in there because he's worthy of it. We go and just go and give him some time. He gave all his time for us and he gave much more. He gave himself naked. He, he hung naked on the cross. So we can, we, you know, we, we ought to, we should go in there. And we go there not for blessing. We go there because he's worthy. But he's such a good father He's such a good father. He's such a good, he loves us so much that blessing comes in this place. It does. You, those of you who um, have been in there, you will know. And if you haven't been in there, I challenge you just to close your doors. Because honestly, like, this is not me um, saying it. This is actually the Holy Spirit saying it to all of you, youth. Like, close the door. Get in there for a little bit. And God's eternal. You know what? You won't even realize time flies by in there because there's no time in heaven. There's no time in eternity. Believe me, it's, he's worth it. Just get in there. Close your doors, all of them. Even if it's time it. Make a little time if you want. But close the door. For anyone like this, I know that there's people in here that, you know, you're, you're caught up with life. It's, it's a busy life. It is. I know. 
You know, I'm not even working at the moment, but it's a busy life. <laughs> you know? But you, we need to make that time. Because you know what? Then there's no point. Why do we come here? Like, why are we here? Why are we here today? I, I, like, for real, I want you to think about it. Why are you here today? If you're not going to get in that place. That place is the most important place. It's where everything comes to life. It's where you come to life. Your soul. Your, if, if you're tired, if you're tired of ministry or work or anything like that, or just your life or your thoughts, go into this place. He will lift you up. He will actually comfort you. You know, he will really comfort you and he will give you strength for whatever it is. If it's youth, for me, or, you know, anything, even marriage maybe. If you're having troubles, like, just get in the secret place. You'll find yourself in there. You'll find yourself in his eyes when he looks at you. And he, honestly, he gives you such, he loves us so much. He actually loves us so much. And I, I really, really, I pray, I really hope that you're not seeing me today. I know it's hard because I'm here. But this is a word from the Holy Spirit into you. He needs you. He, he needs your time. He wants your time. He wants to love you. That's why he came and, that's why he came and sent his, his precious son to die on the cross like that, the way that he did, was so that he could know you. So let's give him that time today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day until we meet him. Because you know what Jesus says? He says in, in the Bible, he says that people will be like, when he comes back, you know, people will be like, Lord, you know, Lord, Lord, I went to church. I went to church. I, I did all these things. Like you saw me. I, I taught. I preached. I laid hands on Sylvia and she was healed because I believed in your name, Jesus. And he says, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. That's what the Bible says. So I think, you know, it's, it's, we should go in there. Let's just get in there. It's such a good place. Like, it's the best. I love that place. It's my favorite place, the secret place. It's just a really awesome place, and we really do. We need to get in there. We need to get in there today. I'm telling you, this is the Lord. He's telling you that you need to get in there today. It's just the truth. It's not what I want to say for some message. This is what the Lord wants us to, to do. He wants us to love him and, and for him to be able to love us. Yep. All right. So we've acknowledged, um, you know, ways of getting in this secret place. We've basically, like, this is, this is the message. This is the heart of God. This is what the Lord has told me to say. And um, are you receiving today? Are you receiving what I'm saying? Am I making sense? I hope I'm making sense because if that would really just, you know, I've been given this opportunity to share and I really want you to take it. Isaiah, the scripture in Isaiah 40 to 28 to 31. We can turn there. If you want, please turn with me. All right, 28. It says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope on the Lord will renew their strength. Or it might say those that wait upon the Lord. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen? That's awesome. Because it's saying that days that... Well, my, this one, this verse, uh, version doesn't really say wait, but maybe your version says wait. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When we go to the Lord, and not that we're waiting for him, because he's there. I believe that it's saying those that wait, wait for this thing to die, wait for yourself to get into that realm where he is already at, they will renew their strength. So like I was saying, um, we don't go in there for blessings, but they come. They come. If you're tired, he will give you strength. If you're growing weary, he's going like, to lift you up and encourage you. He's going to say, you can do this. I've given you grace for this task or whatever it is. It says, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow tired or weary. And then when you go down to verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So it's saying that we're going to be like God, basically. That we're going to have his strength. And it's true. That's the, that's, that's the truth. When we come into this secret place, we become more like Jesus. Because we're with him. When you're with, when you're with someone, 
you know that you become more like them, right? So go into this secret place because you're going to become more like God. Uh, the people, um, the Israelites, when Moses went down to the, um, speak to God, really, he was in the presence of the Lord. He came back and his face was radiant and glowing. And they knew that he had been with the Lord. That's what it would be like. That's what it would be like when we come out of this place. People will see God. They don't, don't, won't really know what, what it is, but they're just going to be drawn to you because God is good. God is good and he, you want to go to God because he loves and he's, he gives. He's such a good um, person, such a good God that people are drawn to Jesus. Yes, there was multitudes following Jesus. Why? Because he was so um, different. He had authority, he had power. He had something that they didn't have. So when you come from that place, you're going to have the same thing and people will be following you saying, oh, I don't even know what it is about this person. I just kind of like, tell me what you know. What is it that you know that, that I don't know? You know something I don't know and I want to know what it is. You know what I mean? That's the truth. So go into that place because people will see Christ in you because you'll become more like him. You'll look just, you'll be the spitting image of Jesus. And I'm not talking about like straight away, you're not going to just come out there like, I'm Jesus. You know what I mean? But that's why I say daily, we need to get in there. Every single day, we need to make sure that we make time for this place. It's, so, it's just important. Otherwise, we will die, really, I think, I believe. After, you know, m- many years of not um, being with the Lord, you're just going to be in religion. You're just going to be doing the things, you know, getting in the motions of church life or life, but you're not experiencing his love. What a shame. It's very, very sad, really, because it's like you're not even getting to enjoy the awesomeness of God. He's awesome. He's an awesome God. I love that song that says, our God is an awesome God, because he is an awesome God. Like, he's an awesome God. Let's go before this awesome God. Yeah? Let's just go before God. He's so worthy and deserving of it. And it's true. That's the truth. And I pray that you would take that. Take that on board today. It's just, you need to. You really need to. Go in there right now if you have to, if you hear him calling you. Oh, wow. Okay. You become of one mind and one heart with the Father. You'll see like he sees. So discernment. Are you looking like, do you want to serve the Lord? For whoever wants to actually live their life for Jesus, this is the place where you're going to see like he sees. So you won't look at someone and go, yeah, I'm not going to share with them today. They're kind of crazy. Or like they look like they're not going to receive. Because you'll actually see them how he sees them. You'll see them like through the blood. And then you'll just approach them like, no, they need to know who they are. Because you're going to see his, through his eyes. Because you're with him. Yes? You're going to see like he sees. You'll feel like he feels. So your heart will be for the lost and the broken. Your heart will actually, you know, just burden for souls to come and know God the way you know him or more. You will just actually, that's what he wants. So you'll become like him, so therefore you'll, you'll feel like he, he actually feels about people. And you'll walk like he walks. You'll start to talk like he talks. Basically, you're going to be like him. You're going to look just like Jesus. Maybe not straight away, but hopefully, in some, you know, at some point you will. The more you go in there, the more you want to go in there. Like, just like anything else, like water or, you know, for me, Coke, you know, a drink. The more you have of something, the more you want. So let's get addicted to the secret place. Let's just get addicted to the secret place. Come on, it's the truth. It's just the truth. I don't want to come here with, like, um, like nice little speech. I don't know how to, I'm not great at that. The point is that we need to get in there. That's what he's saying. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about speech. He just wants you to get in there because that's where everything flows from. Like everything, flow, everything actually flows from that secret place. Like everything in your life, all the fruit, if you want to you know, call it that. Anointing will come from there because you're working in his power. His anointing will just flow because you've, you're with him. Like it's not even you. It's not even you. It's just like you're with him. He's there. You're, you're like functioning in him. You know what I mean? So that's where the anointing comes from. It's his anointing. A fire and a zeal for his kingdom to come to earth. That's where, again, you become more like him. You're in this secret place. He's showing you his glory. You're sitting there like God, like Jesus, man. Whew. And this fire will like burn up his fire. His holy fire will actually burn and stir up within you. And you'll be like, like Terry, <laughs> like, come on. You know, let, let's get out there. Let's get out there. Because he, he, he puts a fire and a zeal inside of your soul, and it's his. It's just the truth. This is the truth. Strength and grace, yes, um, definitely strength and grace. If it, wasn't, like, if it wasn't for the Lord, if it wasn't for his grace, I probably would have passed out by now. 
Literally, I'm serious. I would have been like, I can't do this, Neil. I'm sorry. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this message. <laughs> Just like, I'm sorry. Bless you. No. <laughs> it's the truth. I love you. <laughs> but God is good, and He has. He does give us grace. He gives us the strength to do what He's called us to do. The Lord has put me on for today. The Lord put me on the roster today. Not Neil or Pastor Peter or whoever does the rosters. It was it was Jesus, and because He's been sharing this, and He really wants to stick through this whole theme of prayer. He knows what He's talking about. God's good. He knows what he's doing. He's, he's very smart. <laughs> more faith. You'll get more faith. Faith will grow in this place because you're with God. You can't. Like, you're like, oh my Lord, you're real. Thank you, Lord, that you're real. You are real. You're not like those other gods that uh, the people sit there worshipping and they have to do all these things for, or maybe they don't have to do anything for them. But they're not even real, Lord. You're the almighty God that's true. You're the one true God. And that's, you know, your faith is just like, you're like, because you're with him. It's not like you're like in this place that you're not, you're not really with him and you're just like pretending. You're there and you can, you can feel him. You can hear him. He's breathing on you. You know what I'm saying? So you actually, you actually know he's real and your faith just grows. Forgiveness comes in this place. I, I, you know, um, I've had, obviously we all have had issues with, you know, I guess a little bit of unforgiveness from time to time. And if you haven't, if you're saying you haven't, now, I question that, but... We've had that, we've had that, you know, where we can be like, oh, how did they say that to me, or whatever, or like, how'd they do that, oh. and then kind of just lingers here. Well, I've had that, you know, and it was a real struggle for me. It was like, I, I'm talking about, like, I couldn't, and I wanted to. I was like, oh, I can't even come to you. How am I going to come to you, Lord, and tell you, like, you know, you, for, you know, you forgave me for everything, and that person, you know, like, how can I even come to you? But no, that's where I actually, my forgiveness, I gave it to the Lord. I just gave the person to the Lord, gave the situation to the Lord, like as in I started talking to him about the person. And you know what? I, I mean, I was crying for this person by the end of the like, speech or whatever, by the end of my you know, complaining about this person, or not complaining, but giving it to him. Like, Lord, I really can't forgive this person. Like, I don't know what to do, Lord. I know I have to forgive. I know I have to forgive. Like, what do I, how do I forgive? And he just started actually showing me what he's done in that person's life who that person was, what he's done in that person's life, and who that person is going to be even more in the future. He started showing me things that, about this person, or these people, really, whatever. And I was like, God, man, I, I, I forgive him. You forgive him. You love him. You love him so much. You actually love this person a lot. But that's only going to come in this secret place. It's not going to come with, like, Lord, all right, Lord, take this burden. Oh, Lord, I forgive this person because you said forgive. You actually have to be like on your knees. Lord, I really want to forgive this person with my whole heart. I don't want to ever think about this thing again. I, I, you love him. You, I don't care about this. And he will actually help you with that forgiveness. He will. It's happened for me. So if you have any unforgiveness, take it to your secret place. And he's going to mend you. And he's going to show you things about this person that you're going to be like, I love this person, man. This person's awesome in you, Jesus. Like this person's actually awesome in you, God. You're good. Glory. <laughs> you deserve glory because, you know what, this person is so good. And I, I, I mean, I have my own thoughts, but your thoughts are higher than mine. Your thoughts are way higher than mine, Lord. And you know what? Bless you, Lord, and bless this person. You'll start blessing the person because you'll be like, man, you want to. You want to bless the person because now you've actually forgiven them and you just want to bless them. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So Deliverance and strongholds and shackles or chains, they'll be broken. They'll be broken in this place. There's no room. There's no room. I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to be perfect straight away, but the more you get in this place, you'll just start to know more of yourself in Jesus, who he's made you to be, who he saw you before he even created the foundations of the earth, and you'll be like, yeah, Pastor on you are real right. If you know how much the Father loves you and what he has for you, you don't want to put these things into your body that are going to kill you. How are you going to serve if you're like in the hospital like because you have cancer or something because you've been doing something silly? Yeah? So they're broken. They're broken in this place. Just, they're broken. Just be before him. And even if it does take time, freedom comes because the spirit of the Lord is there. You're in his presence. You're in his holy presence. There's no room for chains. He breaks those things. They're like nothing to him. They're like a little string. I want to give glory to the Lord because... Um, you know, I did have, um, I had an issue with my chest and there was, you know, I couldn't even sleep at night. I, 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 I it was hurting. I had just lumps all over them, like five on each side. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm going <laughs> to, 
oh no, this is this is how this is what's gonna, this is my thing. Like, this is how I'm something's gonna go wrong for me. And I, I just I actually went to the secret place for it. And I just laid my hands every single day and I went into the presence of God every single day and I said, Jesus, Jesus, you know, I just I just went off. Jesus claiming him, what he's done, his healing, his love for me, that he that these things is this is nothing for him. It's nothing for him. And I just gave it to him in this place. I just Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then I just found myself in the secret place already. Like, you know, I'm just worshiping with the angels, join with the angels. The angels are there. We're all worshiping God and I'm holding my chest. Yes, Lord. And I just gave it to him every single day for three months or so. And they're gone. They're like gone. I even had like, I had to check them out. I had to go get radio, like the, you know, scans and things like that. Um, and they're just gone, you know, because I, I, me, I really believe that healing comes from this place. That's me. I believe it, and I hope that you believe it too, because if you have something that you think, mm, this thing's going wrong in my body, just go and talk to God about it and claim his stripes and just give it to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just say his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just worship, you know, holy, 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 holy. Holy, you've made me holy. Holy God, you're holy, and I thank you that I can come into your presence. Like um, Anthony was saying, what a privilege, what an honor. It is that we can actually, we don't have to do all these things. All we have to do is close the door, really. Close the door, worship his holy name, and we're there. And he loves us, and he just wants to love us. And it's a, it's, a, it's a privilege. We're a privileged people. We're a blessed people, but we're privileged. Because other people have to do all these things. They have to, like, bow down, like, I don't know how many times a day, um, to think that God can hear them, and they don't even have a relationship with him. It's so sad. But we, we actually can, we know God and we are honored, very honored and privileged and blessed to be able to come into that place and hear from creator of the earth and heavens and galaxies and everything, everything that's made, everything that's seen and unseen. We, Ben, Neil, we can actually go into the presence of Jesus, God, almighty king. You know what I mean? That's an honor. And we shouldn't take that lightly at all. I know that we do because it's, I'm not trying to point fingers, but I know that I have. And we can come to that place where we're just like, yeah, I'll go to you soon, Lord. I mean, I'm coming. I'm going to come. Like, I'm coming. I'm coming. But we don't really go sometimes because he wants more. And if you think in your heart, you know, I know God. I do talk to God. Good. Amen. Keep talking to him. And if you think that you've hit a wall, no. No. There's no wall. Jesus, like that song says, he wants to come and smash that wall up because there's so much more to Jesus. There's so much more to the Father. There's a lot that we can get from this place. So much. There's so much in there. And that's, some, that's a place that the Lord wants us to be in today. I hope that you can hear me, that God wants us in it today. Don't go away thinking, yeah, no, I know, she's right. She probably fumbled this and that, blah, blah, blah. She's right. I'll get in there soon. No. If you're, if, you're try, if you're fighting, if you're finding reasons not to go in there, God's calling you. Stop fighting it. Just go in there. Just give him a shot. Give him a chance. Give him a chance to just be like, okay, Lord, you know what? I'm going to close the doors. Off. Phone. Um, TV. Shut up. Off. Everything's just going to be off for a second. I'm just going to sit and I'm just going to wait. Gee, you know, start singing. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but, you know, just wait. wait. Wait for your flesh to die and just say, you know, God, I love you. I want to know what Cardi is talking about, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, because I know that we do. But if you don't, just sit there and wait. And I'm telling you, you're going to be in there for, I mean, you're going to be in there for a while. <laughs> you might be in there for a while, because it's such an awesome place. It's such a, it's such a good place to be in. It really is. It's, it's my favorite place to be in. It's, it's where, honestly, like, sometimes I, I can't. I'm just like, Lord, oh. Why do you love me, Lord? And he's like, my blood. And I'm like, oh, I know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he's just so good. And he, he loves you so much. And I'm telling you that you won't, you won't, um, you can know about his love. You can hear about his love at church every single Sunday and at Bible studies and maybe on at fellowships when you actually fellowship in the Lord. You can hear about it and you can, and, it, and it's good. It's actually awesome. I'm not taking away from, you know, any of that. But you really, your life will be changed in the secret place because you're experiencing his love. You're with him. You're like, hey, dad, you know, papa. I'm like, papa, I love you, Lord. 
You know, he's so good. And he loves me, he sees me as a daughter. And when I think, sometimes it just takes me back to where I was, whoo, game over. I'm like, Lord, you're just so good. Like, why do you even, why do you even see me that way? Like, I was so bad, I used to curse God. I used to swear at God a long, long, long time ago, but I did. And I'm just like, Lord, you still loved me when I was cursing your name. I was, the things I would say was disgusting, and he loves me, and he shows me, Cardi, I've, I've loved, I love you. I actually love you so much, and you're not what people may think, what you think they may think. You know, if you have thoughts like, this person thinks this of me, these people think that of me, or I'm not good enough, or whatever it may be for you, that's the place where he's going to say, oh, look what I have for you. I have everything that I have is yours now. You're actually more than that. I have robed you in white robes, and you are, you are good. You are my child. I love you. I want to robe you. I want to clothe you. I want to feed you. I want to sing to you. I want to hug you. I want to just, I want to rock you to bed. That's what he did to me last night when I was having a bit of a panic attack. I'm like, Lord, just rock me. I just want you to just, like, I want to be like a little baby. And that's what it is. We're like a little baby. Like, Ryan talks about his sons all the time. Mostly Noah, but it's okay. We're getting to <laughs> But he loves him so much. And that love that he has for his kids, you know, or any fathers, you know, it's, it's precious. I, can, I mean, I have my niece and nephews that I pretty much brought up with alongside my sister, the mother. And, you know, when I looked at them, like, it's true. Like, the love, they're, they're perfect. They're little babies. And you just want to feed them. Because, you know, you want to feed them. You want to clothe them. You want to keep them warm. And if it's hot, you want to keep them fresh. You know, you want to just give them everything that they need. You know what I mean? And you just want to love them. You just want to be like, I just love you. Pastor Sonia, we know <laughs> how much she loves her grandchildren. You know? Um, they're precious. But, you know, God loves us so much more than that. He, like, we're limited in our human love. But he, he just wants to pour it out. He just wants to lavish his love. Like a stream. <laughs> He just wants to come completely just like drown us pretty much in his love. So we need to get into that place. And that's what I really wanted to share today. Really, I wanted to share, I did, but he wanted to share it more. Because I was like, Lord, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how to share this. Like, what am I going to say? And he just actually put like put his heart and his, his thoughts, like his, how much he cares, how much he wants this, he's put into my heart. And it's just, I hope that it's coming across because it's just what he wants. This is something that the Lord wants for you and me. So I think that, you know, today we should just give him some time. Give him time, recognize him. He's worthy to be acknowledged every day. And if you, don't, if you feel like you don't hear him that often, like, I don't always hear God. Like, I have people say to me, I don't hear God like you or like that person or, or like people from the church. Like, I don't hear God. And well, get in there. And you'll start to recognize his voice and his love for you. Get in the word with him. Just get in the word and say, you know, read, read the word to him. Read what he's done to himself. You know, and he will love you. He will, he'll bless you. you. You'll get things that you can only get from this awesome hiding place, his secret place. This is the place that got um, Jesus to the cross, I believe. He was always there. He was always there. It says, that in, you can read about it yourself, but he was there in the more early hours of the morning for, you know, hours, I'm sure. And even when he was about to, you know, go and get taken away, um, he was just in there. It's his, it's his place where he comes and gets, like, fed even. He said it. I have food that you don't even know about. I don't need that food right now. I've got food that you don't know about. It's food, like, the Lord's blessed him with that food. I'm going to feed you, my son. I'm going to feed you my words, what I have for you. Yeah? Make sense? All right. I've written, let us all become more aware of this longing desire of the Father and give him time in our day, for he wants to spend time with us and show us more of who he is and who we are inside of him. You won't ever know who you are in Christ. You might think you know who you are in Jesus, or you might, and you might be right, yes, but it's still not the full capacity. Like, there's more. Like, I've seen things that I'm like, no, Lord, are you sure? You know, but it's true. And he just keeps putting it into my head, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. This is who you've made me to be. I'm not that girl anymore, and I am a holy, beautiful daughter of Jesus. And you're going to use me, God, in any way that, I, that you can, even if it's just by praying or maybe loving someone or telling someone about the Lord. I'm going to live for you, Jesus. You're worthy. 
but I will grow weary and tired and I won't go, I won't do anything for the Lord. I really won't. It'll just become this motion thing and there'll be no power. You know, there's this, um, I was um, just looking for this, like as I was doing this message, I went um, through um, some, you know, YouTube messages and it was, um, the title of one message was The Ministry Behind the Closed Doors. So if you today think that you don't have a ministry, maybe you don't belong somewhere in this church like youth or, you know, 18 to 25s or, I'm not sure what it's called, yeah, 18 to 25s or, you know, um, the new blessings or if you're not a Bible study leader, well, you know what? I think you have the, you, not I think, you actually do have the greatest ministry and this is available to everyone and it's the ministry behind the closed doors. It's the ministry on your knees because you might not be a youth leader or, or a leader for the 18 to 25s, you know, group, but um, you're in your own little prayer ministry, you're, you're in, you know, the, the, the uh, ministry behind the shut door that when you speak into the youth, they're going to receive for you maybe more than they receive for me if I'm not in the secret place. So that's a powerful thing, and it's available to every single one of us. Get in that door. Close that door. Get in that room. Get in the room and close the door and be with your father who loves you. He sent his son for that very reason. It's one of the most important things we need to do, church. It is. It's the truth. So I, I don't know. I really pray that you um, have received... I really pray that today, even if you can't stop hearing the, the word door or secret place, good. Just get in there today. Like I, I'm, I'm saying it on behalf of Jesus right now because I'm the vessel right now. Come away with me. Just come away with me. I love you. That's what he wants. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Come and be with me. I love you. I want to love you. I want to show you great and unsearchable things, things that you won't get anywhere else. Yes?